Aloha friends and family. Welcome back aboard. To the reading of Ascension, the shift to the fifth dimension. Greetings. We are the Arcturian Council. We are pleased to connect with all of you. Before you speak, we recommend that you listen. In your conversations with one another, you are often seeking to get a point across or share some information. You often desire to be heard. Take into account that the person or persons you are talking to want the exact same things. They also want to be heard, and even more than that, they want to be understood. They want to be acknowledged. If you are empathic, which most of you who are awakened are, then you know what the other person or persons feels, but they still want to be heard. So it is your task as a compassionate and loving being to listen and to give the other person's perspective as much weight as your own. If you are talking to someone else whose political beliefs are very different from your own, you may just want to believe that they are wrong and that you are right. But for, from where the other person is coming from, they are right and they have every right to their beliefs, no matter how backwards or archaic they may seem. You all want to evolve together and in order to bring as many people with you as you possibly can, the most important thing you can do is to give another person the right to their perspective and their beliefs. When you do, you are showing love and compassion and you are giving them an opportunity to grow in your acceptance of them as they are. So no matter what someone else is saying to you, we suggest that you first, that your first instinct be to validate the person. Give the person you are speaking to respect and let him or her say whatever they want to say without interrupting. When you speak, speak from the heart. Demonstrate to the other person by your example what speaking from the heart feels like, sounds like, and looks like. And no matter what the conversation is that you are having and no matter with whom, you can help bridge and bring the other person further along in their spiritual evolution. You often favor the parts of yourself that shows to the rest of the world how special you are. You like the parts of yourself that will get you love from other people parts of yourself that feel ashamed of because others have taught you that they are shameful are the parts of yourself that need to be most loved. If you hide them away from others long enough you can deny their existence to yourself but with the lack of love that you show these parts of yourself coupled with the lack of love from the rest of the world these parts of you wither away you become less of your whole self because of judgment. If you can find it in your heart to look at the parts of yourself that society deems unlovable, you can put the pieces back together that have been missing. You can bring these parts of yourself that you do not like into the light and shine the love that you have within you on them. In doing so, you can start a movement within yourself because nothing is ever hidden away completely from the rest of the collective. As you decide that you can love all parts of yourself, that information will be shared with the rest of the collective because you are all connected. And whether anyone knows it originated within you or not, the permission will be granted to others to love all parts of themselves even actions that society would deem as unforgivable. 
All parts of you are parts of Source, and Source is love. You can find the love within yourself and start this movement because when you live in a society of people who love themselves completely, you live in a society that is inching its way ever closer to representing heaven on earth. We are able to per perceive your energy and any fluctuations that we detect in your field. Therefore, we are able to monitor how you are doing as individuals and how you are doing as a collective. And we are happy to report that the recent activity that has been spurred on by your son has been well received and integrated by the collective. Those of you who are aware of what is happening at this time are able to do more for the entire collective than you might think. You are able to send data to the collective through the experiences that you have. So as you are consciously opening yourselves up to receive and assimilate these energies that are being given to you by your son, you subconsciously transmit that data to the entire collective. You are all having a ripple effect on those who are unaware of what is going on. You can do the same with what your collective is very consciously aware of. In other words, when you see people putting their focus on what a politician is saying and resisting that politician, you can help your collective by sending transmissions of love to the politician and to everyone who's getting triggered by that politician. When you hear about a natural disaster on the news, you can and you often do send love and light to those who are affected by the natural disaster. It's not always as easy to see the need for your support when you see something like abuse or when you see something like a murderer or a dictator running amok. Many times on your world, you are encouraged to take a side and to be on the side of good. <clears throat> but we suggest that you offer the light and the love that you are able to download and assimilate from the sun and from the higher realms to the entire collective, no matter what they are doing, no matter what they are saying, no matter what they are believing. Those of you who are awakened are the ones being called to be of service in this way, and the effects that you have are greater than you know. You have begun to recognize the true nature of your beingness, and you are taking yourselves beyond the limitations that had been in place for humanity for eons of time. You are ready now to bring some more of the light of that true nature to this world. It is very important for you all to recognize that the light within you is more powerful than any government, any corporation, any group of individuals who are seeking to control and dominate. Your light comes from the purest source imaginable and your light is capable of reducing the amount of darkness in this world. You see, as you shine your light in whatever way you choose to shine it, you are illuminating that which needs to be seen, processed, and integrated. And therefore, you quicken the ascension process through your willingness to be who you are. Many of you are looking for something big to do, something that will have an enormous impact on the world and all of her inhabitants. But when we talk about shining your light, we are referring to all of the little ways in which you can choose to express yourselves in the moment. You can dance and you can sing, you can paint and you can draw. You can give freely of your time and your compassion. And each opportunity that comes your way to do so helps you to break free from that limitation 
that self-imposed limitation that was set in place to keep you small, to keep you playing a third dimensional game, but your light is all that is required to release you from that limitation, and your light is easy to find. Look within your hearts, feel for it, and let it guide you to the next most exhilarating adventure that you can take. And as we have said, that exhilarating adventure could be taking a sculpting class. It could be gardening. It could be going on a hike that you've never been on before. You are the best ones to determine what makes your light shine most brightly in the moment. So check in with those hearts of yours and let your light guide the way for all humanity. When you are facing an aspect of yourself that you consider to be undesirable or even unlovable, we suggest that you soften your focus. We suggest that you look at that aspect of yourself with less intensity, with less scrutiny, and that you look for less detail. Whenever you look at the bigger picture, or even the biggest picture, you see things in a much different way. When you fixate on one detail as though putting your attention on it is going to make it go away, you take yourselves out of the perspective of the higher self, the oversoul, and source. These are the perspectives from which you can see the bigger and biggest possible pictures, and these are the perspectives from which we would like you to view yourselves, your lives, your actions, and certainly your circumstances. Now ultimately, we want you to love every aspect of who you are, even those aspects that you find so challenging to face. <clears throat> but we are not going to ask you to go right there from where you are. Instead, we are inviting you to a broader perspective that allows you to see all aspects of who you are at once. The truth of who you are is unconditional love. Everything else that you experience yourselves as is a vari variation of that unconditional love. It is unconditional love filtered through a particular lens. So if instead of focusing on what the projection is of that unconditional love after it's been shown through that lens, you were to look at and feel and acknowledge the unconditional love as the origin of that projection, you would have a much different experience of yourself. Soften your focus. Lessen the intensity of the probing that you are doing <clears throat> and instead relax into, fall in, can, into the unconditional love that you truly are that will shift the way the love is filtered that will shift what you project and therefore what you see and experience will shift and you can once and for all know that all aspects of you are that unconditional love they are because of you we have taken many steps to convince you as a collective of your worthiness we are able to send you much energy and information, and we are able to tell you through these transmissions how valuable you are, how beautiful you are, and how lovable you are, but we cannot make you receive what we send you, and we cannot make you believe what we say to you. So now we are taking a different approach. We are honoring you with the practical knowing that we have of your origins. We know that the human race has been born out of the best, of the best, that the galaxy has to offer. 
you were in many ways engineered by all of us who exist in other parts of the galaxy. And you were engineered to be able to hold a significant amount of energy from source within your physical vehicles and within your chakra systems. We know this because when we were incarnate as physical extraterrestrial beings, we worked together with other teams from around the galaxy and from other parts of the universe to ensure that the human being would be the best possible expression of source in a humanoid form and in a physical reality. What you are doing now is fulfilling that destiny you are actualizing our intent for all of you. And it is not always easy. The fact that it's not easy is a wonderful in indicator to all of you of how much progress you're making, how much work you are doing for the Universal Collective. It is an indicator of how valuable you are to all of us across the galaxy and beyond. We had a hand in creating you, and therefore trust us when we say that you are the best of the best and you are capable of holding immense amounts of source energy within you and operating from the highest frequencies that you can possibly imagine. And you are of tremendous service to this entire universe by your mere presence here on planet Earth. <clears throat> we are bringing the perspective to your reality that offers you a sense of completion. You get to experience many different perspectives on reality. Not only are there the perspectives of your friends and family members, but also of the people who are a part of the media. And so we like to round out all of the perspectives that you are exposed to, and we give you a choice. We don't ask for membership in a group. We want you to get as many perspectives as you can to round out your own so that you have all the perspectives within you that are necessary in order for you to make an informed decision about your life and how to approach it. When you are <clears throat> contemplating taking a particular action, most of the perspectives that are influencing you are doing so on a subconscious level. It is the little voice inside your head that has been so active within you throughout your life that you don't even hear it anymore. We want you to make your decisions consciously, taking all different perspectives into consideration. We know that there are other channeled beings out there, and they have their perspectives. And we also know that if you are paying attention to us, you are probably also paying attention to some of them, and that is a good thing. You want to have as many perspectives at your disposal as you can possibly obtain. And you also want to weed out those subconscious voices so that you can listen to your heart. Your heart is very well-rounded. Your heart guides you through the impulses that you get, but more importantly, your heart guides you through the vibration that it holds your heart holds a high vibration like an eternal flame that you can always go back to. And when you do, you will be holding that high vibration as well. And then the perspective that is of the highest vibration will be the one that gets your attention. And that is what we want for you. We want you to be able to determine for yourselves which perspective that is coming from outside of you is a vibrational match to that of your heart's perspective. As you already know, we are here in service to humanity and we are happy to be of service to you. You may have noticed that we don't come down from the ninth dimension 
<clears throat> and land ships on your world in order to do something that will be of service to all of you. It is with our words and through our energetic transmissions that we assist you. We see so many of you looking for a calling, for a purpose, so that you too can serve humanity. You want to help, and we want to help you. We want to help the helpers by letting you know that with your words, with your energy that you transmit, with your kindness, your compassion, and your ability to listen, you are helping. You are of service. We would love to see more of you acknowledging yourselves and then going out and having a good time. <clears throat> we would love to see more of you playing instead of worrying about what it is that you can do to be of greater service. It is your energy, your presence, and your intention that helps humanity more than your actions ever could. When you do for others, often you do out of a sense of obligation or even pity. Now, when the opportunity presents itself for you to do something to be of service, we absolutely encourage you to do so. But what isn't serving you is sitting around thinking about what you can do to be of service when the opportunity is not right in front of you. And there doesn't seem to be anything that needs to be done by you, then take that as a clue. Remember, you are creating <clears throat> your own reality. And if you want to create an opportunity for yourself to be of service through action, you will. In the meantime, we suggest that you utilize your free will and your ability to act to go out into the world and do the things that give you the greatest amount of joy. Do the things that raise your vibration. And then when you do find yourself face to face <clears throat> with someone who could use some cheering up or who could use someone to inspire them, you will be there. You will be there offering a greater vibration because you weren't worrying about how you could help. Once you, once you decide that you are enough and that your presence here on planet Earth at this time is serving the collective, then you can let go of this need to find some grand project that will last years and years. And then you can relax and enjoy your life. By doing so, you will be emanating a higher frequency. And that is something that will help every single person on the planet. There has been a tendency <clears throat> amongst those of you who are awakened to consider yourselves to be more responsible for others than you are responsible for your own well-being. You have demonstrated that you are by and large the most compassionate, caring, giving people on the planet. Now, of course, there are those who are caring, giving, kind, compassionate, and loving who are by the definitions of most unawakened. And there are awakened beings who are quite selfish. But for the most part, you all feel an obligation to help, an obligation to be of service, and a calling to help others awaken. So you often find yourselves wanting to know how it is that you can contribute more. The answer to that question is always right in front of you. You can contribute more by looking within yourselves for what it is that you are still holding judgments towards. You can look at the areas of your life where you know you have work to do. There is always room for more forgiveness, more acceptance, and more unconditional love for those who you can see are working to separate and manipulate. 
if each of you takes the time necessary to process and to integrate what is going on within you, then you will notice a shift in the collective as well. But instead, what most of you are doing is attempting to shake others awake, or you are doing for others what you believe they cannot do for themselves. You must believe in the ability of your fellow humans to wake up on their own and to create the realities that are most of service to them. What you give your fellow humans that is most valuable is your unconditional love, your compassion, and your belief in the good inside of them. When you allow others to be where they are, <clears throat> and to evolve at their own pace, you do them more good than you know. We are surprised by humanity every single time we look upon you. There is no shortage of love, compassion, and kindness on your world, in spite of the fact that you have all been oppressed for millions of years. You have not lost faith, and you have not lost hope and you have found strength where it seemed there was none to be found. You have, persevere, you have persevered through the darkest of times, and we are pleasantly surprised to see that humanity is still making life on planet Earth as pleasant and enjoyable as you can. The more of you who awaken the more recognition there is that there are forces who are keeping humanity at a manageable level. There are more and more of you who are awakened to the fact that you have been under the control of certain nefarious groups and that they have the ability to silence people who want to expose them. And so, what can you do once you recognize that you are being oppressed, you are being kept down, and you cannot oppose the ones who are doing it by exposing them? And you certainly cannot win by force because they have technology that far exceeds what is available to most humans. Again, we are going to ask you to do the unimaginable here, the unthinkable. We are suggesting that you do the only thing that will keep you in the higher frequency ranges. We are asking you to love your oppressors because as you hold that higher frequency, you make yourself invisible to them. It is through fear that they manipulate and control your love and your compassion for each other must extend to them in order to disarm them. There are those working on the side of the dark who can be saved, but it will take a tremendous amount of light to do it, and that is where all of you come in. the Arcturian Council and we have enjoyed connecting with you. And we leave you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. Until next time, my beautiful friends and family.